in a field near Hailsham for four days and three nights only. Welcome to the Strange Games Festival. You are listening to SGFR, the podcast radio station for the festival. Now broadcasting our shameless promotion, featuring a nearly useless tour of the Strange Games Games Library. to this little diagram there's one card oh. length space between yeah but how far to this one uh seven excuse me seven Six. seven widths so. that's the entrance point yeah and we don't know what these great rewards are but we're digging towards this is saboteur the players take on the part of dwarves Either they are gold diggers working their tunnels ever deeper into the mountain in search of treasures, or they are saboteurs trying to put obstacles into the digger's path. The members of each group should support each other once they figure out who is on their side. If the gold diggers manage to create a path to the treasure, they are duly rewarded with the nuggets of gold. Oh wow, that looks like a nugget of gold. It's on a card, by the way. Are they all the same? Oh no, three, woo, that's a lot of gold. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think my memory says the maximum is three. Three feels like the yeah, maximum. One, one to three gold. reward. Uh, while the saboteurs have to leave empty-handed, however, should the gold diggers fail, wah, wah, the saboteurs reap the reward. <gasps> After three rounds, the players with the most nuggets win. Three rounds? So you play this three times? Yes, and you may or may not be a saboteur each time. Oh, okay, so basically. Oh, right. And this is a game for up to ten players. Really? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Well, that explains why this deck's so big. Yeah, three to ten players, about half an hour. It varies a little bit. I don't think I've ever played a big game of that. I can see that being fine. Mm Mm-mm. Uh, among the 44 path cards, there is one start card showing a ladder, which um, is beautifully laid out. I wish you could see it, guys. <laughs> uh, it's a small box. It's about the size of a hand. Palm. If you've got a really big palm, then it's the size of the palm. If it's For me, it's about the size of... Yeah, Laura's, Laura's just held the box up to her face. So if you, have, if you can see Laura around, look at her face. And then just imagine a box covering that's large enough to cover her eyes, her nose, and her mouth. Just let's draw a little in your mind's eye, draw a little kind of rectangle, and it's that size. But for those of you who can read, which I suspect is most of us, uh, it does have the word saboteur on the front, and it has what looks like a broken minecart, a broken pickaxe, a broken lantern, and a nugget of gold depicted in the sort of grey rubble of a mine. But it feels like it's a bigger game than the box. It, it is. Has. A, I'd argue it is a bigger game mm. because it's already spread out to a sort of one and a half foot square area. Yeah. You can be the evil saboteur. Right, I'm the evil saboteur. Laura doesn't know this because it's all secret and hidden. And because, you know, there are uh, three to ten players, in a three-player game, there's one saboteur. In a ten-player game, all the cards are played, and there are three saboteurs and seven gold diggers. So if I'd have done that, somebody might start calling me... Saboteur. Saboteur, yeah, because, because it's because not a great move, but that's, that's the only card I had. And of course, we don't believe her. No, no Which reason. is the point of the game. This one's got a map. Yeah. Oh, that means I can look at the gold. Oh, that's Isn't good. Isn't it? That's the one where yeah, I can... One of them so um, we're trying to get to the end of the tunnel and there are three gold cards and one of them has gold and two of them have lumps of coal. Um, but at various points you'll d- pick up cards that lets you have a look and see which one's the real target. Um, but of course only you see it and it depends on whether people believe you or not, whether they follow your lead and aimed for that one. And if you're a saboteur, maybe you want to lead them astray. Yeah, and basically the rule of these games is you can trust everyone, yeah? <laughs> Even the saboteur. 
so it's a sort of betrayal game, really. You need to have a functioning lantern, a functioning pick, and a functioning card yeah. to be able to dig. Yeah. If anybody plays a breaking action on one of your things, yeah. then you would need a, a lantern to fix it, to enable you to dig again. And this is digging, which is different from laying down a pathway. No, that that. So that's what I mean. To, to, in order to lay down a path, yeah. you need to have those three digging items. So if somebody you, breaks one of them, you yeah. need to recover that. Ah, number of cards depends on player count. That's why I couldn't find it. So it, it's more cards for the smaller games. And, and it kind of makes sense. The more people you have, the fewer yeah. cards you have. Um, and also, of course. If somebody really trusts you, or if somebody is a saboteur and knows that you are also a saboteur, they can fix your broken equipment for you. Yeah, by playing a repair card. On. Yeah. I value the vanilla game a little bit less than I value saboteur plus expansions, because there's no real, in my mind anyway, there's no real urge for people to not be obvious and work together mm. in the vanilla game. Uh, once you've worked out who the saboteurs are, you just sort of keep charging yeah, keep ahead, charging ahead. Um, and yeah. there's no reason to act shifty, so the saboteurs have nowhere to hide mm. because everybody else is working together. Whereas in the other expansions where you add in factions, you might have uh, the blue gnomes working with the, uh, working to against the green yeah. dwarves, gnomes, um, whatever the themes are, whatever, yeah. um, then you might have a reason to say, oh, well, I'm not going to tell you where the gold is because you don't know if they're on your side yet and you want to get your team to the gold first. Do you think because you have to play three rounds of this and you get assigned your role differently, whether that was originally intended as a way of balancing out? I think the, the, the reason, the intention of uh, the game is that you want to, people to get you near to the gold, mm. but you want to be the person who makes the actual connection because then you get first dibs on the gold cards and you can take the one with the three nuggets mm. rather than the, 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 the less yeah. worthwhile nuggets because gold at the end of the three rounds is what counts. Yeah. So there is an element of, in the original game, trying not to let people get too close whilst you also mm. want to get close. But I think it does it far more effectively with the expansions and the the other reasons for behaving shifty. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice social game. Uh, yeah. The elements of co-op is always good to have a nefarious evil bad guy. What's that? It's a. It's a tiny hedgehog. Oh wow! Oh, pleasant surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it takes a lot of people. It will it will fit around a lot of people around the table. Mm. It's a game that you can be sociable whilst playing. Um, it's a game that can be picked up quickly and can be rinsed and repeated quickly. Yeah, that's to its benefit for big social gatherings. Yeah, yeah. In, it, it's it's in the group of games that I think I'd say yeah, yeah. It's like get going. This is a nice one to start up with. Yeah, yeah. Bandido is another one, and um, herd mentality is is another. Mm. You've been listening to SGFR, the podcast radio channel for the Strange Games Festival. Your hosts have been Laura, Craig and Andy. And if you'd like to come on the show, message us on the Festival Radio channel on the Strange Games Discord server.